What's up guys, Billy here, and today I'm going to be going over my workflow when editing tutorial videos. Some of you guys seem to enjoy the last workflow video that I posted for my drone movies. If you haven't seen that one, you can click the link in the top right corner to be taken to it. But anyway, today I figured I would upload one for my tutorial videos as it is quite different. The two softwares I will be using in this video are Final Cut Pro and Photoshop, but I will try to keep these steps general so that they can be replicated across various platforms. Now that we've gotten all of the formalities out of the way, let's get into the video. Now the first thing that I usually do when editing my videos is think of an idea. Now as of right now, I have a notes app filled with so many video ideas that I get from comments, that I get from just thinking, that I get from forums, etc, etc. They're all questions that I can answer as well as different products that I'm looking to try out in the future. Usually what I do is I create a new note inside of the notes app. I kind of bounce around between notes app. Right now I'm using Wonderlist. I used to use Microsoft OneNote and then before that I was using Notability. I mean I've really tried them all but I can't find one that I'm absolutely in love with. But anyway I would always write down some different video ideas and then from there structure your video out and try to write down some different points that you want to hit. Usually I'll try to script out a whole video so I don't have to think of what I'm trying to say on the spot, but other than that, if you just write down a few points that you want to hit in your video, you should be good. The next thing that I'll do is go and shoot my footage. Whether it's me actually talking to the camera, whether it's b-roll of something on top of my desk, or I'm outside flying my drone, I'll try to get all of that done before I do anything else. Once we've thought of our idea and we've shot our footage, we can begin to organize our files. As I showed you guys in my previous video for my drone movie workflow, I like to put everything inside of one folder. So in this video, I'm going to be recreating my Mavic tinfoil ATTI video, if you guys saw that. Uh, it was kind of a weird concept. You could wrap your drone in tinfoil and it would put it into ATTI mode. Again, a weird concept. Uh, but I'm going to be recreating it in this video. In my projects folder right here, I have three separate folders in progress, ready for upload, and uploaded. So I kind of have these three stages, and I like to hang on to all of my video files just so I can refer back to them at a later date. So as of right now, everything from the uploaded folder has been taken out of this folder just because it's now been put on the archive drive that I have in my room so I don't take up too much space on my laptop. Now in my in progress folder, I already have a folder set up called Mavic ATTI mode and inside of this folder I have everything that I need to make this video. I've got my footage, I've got some of the voiceovers that I did from my camera, um, you know, I've got the footage from outside flying the drone and I've also got the face cam videos that I recorded from my desk. Now this step is so crucial to me as I want to make sure all of my components are in one place and they're not scattered across different devices like my archive drive or my SD card or an external SSD, anything like that because sometimes I'll bring my laptop back to my dorm room and do some editing. Usually what my process is is shoot the footage at my house, edit at my dorm room. Uh, but anyway, if I forget my SD card and all of the footage from my camera is on that SD card, I'm kind of screwed. My school is 45 minutes away and there's no way that I want to go back and forth just to get an SD card. So again, this is really crucial to me to always have all of your footage in one place. Now that we've put all of our video components into one folder, it's time to open our editing software. As I said, for me, I'm going to be using Final Cut Pro for this video. Now that we've organized all of the footage, we want to organize it yet again into one event inside of the editing software. So I'll create a brand new event and name it something that has to do with the video title. It doesn't have to be the title that I'm uploading to YouTube. Uh, as far as the video settings go, I'll choose whatever is the lowest format of my video file or of my footage. So basically, if I have all my footage shot in 4K, I'll go ahead and choose the video settings to be 4K. But if I have some clips that was shot in 1080p, due to the screen capture of my iPhone, I'll set it to 1080p. So this video format really does depend on the types of clips that you're shooting. For me, all of the videos are in 4K, everything was shot in 4K, so I'm going to be exporting in 4K and at 30 frames per second. Now that all the files have been organized and we've created a brand new event as well as a brand new project, it's time to begin editing the project. First, we'll start off by placing the footage and kind of making a bare bones video. So let me do that and I'll be right back with you guys. So here we are, I've placed my footage down. This is kind of the skeleton of the whole entire project, as I said. I have this sort of beginning part with my face and then the end part with my face as well, going over what we're going to talk about as well as what we cover in the video. And then in between, I've got some screenshots, some different B-roll clips, as well as the actual tutorial part of the video. Once I'm done placing all the footage in its place, I'll go ahead and add some of the titles. As you guys know, I have sort of the informational part of the video where I have that white or black background with the text that shoots up from the bottom of the screen. Let me add that right now and I'll be right back with you guys. 
All right, so here we are. I have added the text in. The way that I did this is just by clicking this little text icon in the top left corner. It'll give you a bunch of different title animations and title styles. Usually I just go with this simple one right here that says basic title. I'll add that in and then from there change the gradient, the font, etc, etc. And this gives me this right here as you can see. I think it looks pretty good, pretty clean, and really easy to read. Now the next thing that we want to do is add some voiceover to this part that is silent. Uh, some of the footage that I added, the screenshots, and of course this text area. So let me bring in some of these voice recordings and I'll be right back with you. So here we are, I have dropped in some voiceovers. Usually I'll do this live right within the editing software. We can do this by clicking window up top and then click on record voiceover. From here this smaller window appears and we can click the record button to begin recording our voiceover with whatever microphone we have attached. One other thing that I do want to point out is I added some background music right in here. I usually like to add background music to my videos wherever I'm not talking. Just because it's weird if I start talking and then for 10 seconds it's completely silent. I feel like someone's sitting there waiting for some sort of noise to come out of their headphones or their speakers, whatever they're listening to the video out of. So whenever I'm not talking, I always like to have some sort of audio in the background. Now I kind of killed two birds with one stone there, I add the voiceovers as well as some background music, but usually I'll do the voiceovers first, just to kind of get an idea of where I need the actual background music to be. Now right here, what you see is pretty much the full edited video, all that's left to do is add the outro and add some color correction, so let's do that. First I'll add the outro. Okay, so there we are, I've added the outro in, it's pretty easy for me, all I need to do is go over to this project that I've created that actually houses my outro, and here I have the two separate versions of the outro I use, the two separate songs that I use, and it's super easy to just copy whichever ones that I want to use, head back over to the, um, to the one that I'm working on, or the file that I'm working on, and then just paste them right in. It's nice and easy, therefore I don't need to go digging through my computer for where I left my outro files at. So guys, that about wraps up the editing portion of this video. Now all that's left to do is go ahead and check for any errors. I'll usually watch through once while I'm in the editing software as it's super easy to make any little changes that I need to. But once you think that everything looks good, we can hit Command E to open up the export menu, click on Next, and then save it into the file or into that document that we started. So I'll go back to my Projects folder, go over to my In Progress folder, the Mavic ATTI mode, and then click Save. Once the video has finished exporting, we can go over to the folder that it's saved in to give it one more look. For example, mine is right here. I'll again give it another watch and just make sure there's no errors. I really want to look through it to make sure everything is spelled right, make sure everything is cut right, and all of the music levels and audio levels are the same so that your eardrums aren't getting blown out. Uh, it's always easy to go back and re-edit it and then re-export it just to make sure everything looks perfect. Now I'll take the time to make a thumbnail. So what you're going to want to do is grab a screenshot from your video, something that will really intrigue the audience and grab their attention. So this is the thing, or this is the thumbnail or screenshot that I chose. There's two ways we can do this. We can actually go to the video clip and take a screenshot of it. But if we're using Final Cut, we can click the share icon in the top right corner and click on save current frame. This will save whatever is on the current frame or on the current screen right now and that's super easy as it will save it in the highest resolution possible. Now to edit the thumbnails I'll usually use Photoshop. This is what I'm most comfortable in as I have been using it for a couple of years now. Uh, so I have a template actually already made underneath of my YouTube folder. So you can open that up inside of Photoshop. It has all of my title, like all my text, and also have my has my logo already inside of there. So it's super easy to just drag my screenshot over and drop it inside of the thumbnail template. So once this loads up, I'll head back over to the Finder, go back to my project, and grab that screenshot drag it right over and give it a little bit to load and boom it's inside of there. Now we want to make sure everything looks good, I'm not going to exactly go through how I do this just because it's fairly self explanatory. But this right here was the thumbnail that I used for the video. If we need to do any photo editing we can, I can also move the logo around as I need but this does look pretty good so we'll save this from here as the thumbnail that we'll use. After we've saved our thumbnail and we go back to that project folder, we'll notice that I have the .psd file just in case I need to go back and edit the actual image and I also have the PNG file so it's available for upload on YouTube. Now once we're done creating the thumbnail, we can head over to the YouTube website and upload it. Once we make our way over to the YouTube upload page, I'll usually change this over to scheduled as I like to make sure my videos fully processed before you guys watch them. 
So heading back over to the in progress folder and into the project folder, we can find that video file that was fully exported and start to upload it. As I said, 4K footage does take a while, so definitely you're going to have to wait as of right now, it's taking 15 minutes to fully upload, and then after that will probably take the same amount of time to fully process. The one thing we want to do is make sure that the thumbnail also is uploaded. Uh, so there's the file right there upload the image and now that we're done we want to make sure that the title and the description are both something that is kind of eye-catching usually I don't like to make clickbait titles I like to make it intriguing so that the audience sees it and wants to watch it but again they are gonna get a genuine video that actually has to do with the topic so again I have my uh, scheduled upload over here and also set a good time so right now we'll notice it's March 9th 950 at night so I usually upload it for about an hour after the actual upload time uh, so right now it's going up at 9.50, I'll usually select 10.30 on the same date. So there we are, the video should go live in around 40 minutes. And now all that's left to do is set up the title. So I think that I made the video something like uh, how to put your Mavic into a TTI mode using tin foil. Uh, so you get the point right there. Uh, just put a nice intriguing title. Also make sure there's no errors, there's no spelling mistakes, everything is capitalized properly. You really want to make sure that you're giving off the best presentation possible. Now as for the description, I actually already have some preset things inside of here. You can do this under settings. I have my YouTube channel, my Twitter account, my Instagram, and my Snapchat. All ways that you guys can connect with me. If you guys actually do want to go follow me on those social media platforms, that would be awesome. But I would highly recommend throwing that stuff in your description as I do get a lot of people coming to me on Twitter and asking me some different you know, questions about my videos. And it's always a great way to connect with other people. So guys, there we have it. That's pretty much it. Once this video is finished uploading, I will go back and again check for any errors. It's always best to just give it one last look when it's on YouTube. Make sure the video is fully processed. Make sure everything is right, like the title, the description, the upload time. I mean, really, I do go through this thoroughly and make sure that everything is just right. So guys, that's pretty much it as far as my workflow for creating tutorial videos goes. If you guys have any questions about the steps that I took, or like to see any of these steps individually worked out in a little bit more detail, I could do that for you guys in the future. So guys, as I said, this video is coming to an end, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.